you also need to have the hand trap. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Because I don't do anything yeah. I don't have to do. Who's your mommy now with yeah, the hand trap? That's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, you didn't have to lift those big oh, yeah. fucking book boxes by yourself, did you? No. Well, neither did you. No, I'm talking to myself Oh, she's here. talking to herself. Okay. Crying in her sleep. <laughs> so, anyway, that was uh, part of my day today and yesterday. I don't know if you noticed, I did get a little sun, which is kind of a, this is a challenging thing to do in Port Townsend, Washington, is to get a little sun. Because what you tend to do is, because there's very little sun, is you tend to look a little, well, if I raised my shirt, you would see how you actually look. And so getting a little sun, but not too much sun, is um, kind of a challenge here in Port Townsend because when the sun is out, you want to sit out in it. Yeah, you want to be out in it. And we did do our garage sale yesterday, uh, which was a raging success socially, if not financially. Socially at least. At least. I mean, I have to say, it was the friendliest crowd at a garage sale. I usually think garage sales are kind of weird, a little bit creepy. Because, you know, there are people going through your stuff. But I've come to a place where now I have a sort of an internal meter about what I'll put in a garage sale. I know I'm really ready to let it go if I'm putting it in the garage sale. And if I'm not ready to let it go, I don't put it there. So I don't have that. I don't take it personally when people are like pawing through your stuff and making faces. You oh, know? God, you know, you would never put your macaroni art out there. To have somebody do that, to paw through that, that beautiful art. Or the Velvet Elvis. Shh. Oh. Nobody knows I have that. Yeah. I stole that from a hotel. Yeah. In Albuquerque. Yeah. Area 51. Oh, that was something else. <laughs> <laughs> She's just trying to crack me up. <laughs> so, I uh, guess we, we had our garage sale and we had our typically wacky Port Townsend uh, crowd come through. We had um, some small children. We had a very sober young child, a little girl, who stood very seriously and looked at me, regarded me. She didn't really look at me. She regarded me. And all attempts to make contact with her, to break the ice, not going to happen until I showed her that the little green frog that was on the 25-cent table, which actually went with her for free, would do this thing where you could pull it really, really, really long. And suddenly, I'm her best friend. Um, so we did have we had kid interactions. We had older people interactions. We um, had handicap interactions. We did. We had disabled. Not just interactions. talking about me. That's right, or me. Um, we had uh, we. I, I was glad that our um, our event was wheelchair accessible because it was in our driveway, mm -hmm. which is nice, paved and everything. But oh, the other thing is, I saw the coolest wheelchair. I had just watched, if you haven't seen it, I recommend seeing The Music Within, is that Music the name Within. of it? Music Within, which is the story of Richard Pimentel, who uh, lived in Portland, actually, who I met in Portland, um, who basically was one of the really great activists who helped um, uh, get the ADA passed, the American with Disabilities Act passed, and so anyway, I was telling you, I saw this really cool wheelchair. I thought... We were talking about it later, and we are like, well, that's the smartest thing. Like, why didn't somebody think of this before? Well, obviously, because probably not that many people pay attention to what disabled people really need. But it was a wheelchair that you could tip it back, like it would rear up, so you could scooch your, boot, your booty back in the seat. Really, really cool. And uh, without it was, the assistance of anybody, of anybody, gravity, without anybody else's assistance, gravity driven. Yeah, gravity driven, and it was great because the owner of the wheelchair was then very happy to demonstrate to me all the bells and whistles on her chair. It was a very cool chair. So uh, uh, let's see what else. What else has happened, Cheetah? Well, uh... that's one of her other many nicknames: Laura Rosales, Cheetah. What else has happened? Well, it's not new news. It hasn't just happened. But what is still happening is that there's oil spilling into ah, the Gulf. Ah, yes. Oil spilling. Actually, I was going to have a visual aid today because I just heard that the uh, the BP is managing to, stu to suck. I think they managed to suck. Yeah, they're to managing suck, to suck all right. <laughs> to suck 5,000 gallons of the, I don't know, something like 504,000 gallons a day. 
that is leaking out. So I was like going to do a visual aid, like with the cup. I think that would be a great visual aid. I mean, it would be so half empty. It would be so much more than half empty. Uh, but five thousand. We recaptured five thousand gallons. Can you imagine? And we're spilling two million million. So how does that work? We got five. We spilled two. Quantified by. Can't, wait, wait. It's physics. That's why they can't do it. Because it's physics. And it's that's complicated. Why they can't tell us what the truth is. That's right. Because it's complicated. It's complicated. It's like Harry Potter. It is as Julie complicated. Julie Goldman says. That's right. So, uh, but here is the good news. I think on that front, which is. We've always known that we just cannot keep doing that. And now it's getting clearer and clearer. We can't keep doing that. Well, no, we could keep doing that. But this is where it goes. So I'm actually glad that it's back in the news. You know, I was uh, I actually worked at a gas station in 1978, I think it was, in Wichita, Kansas. And I was there when the gas prices went up from, uh, I think there were 65 cents a gallon. I know this is perhaps unimaginable to some of you, younger people. Uh, it was 65 cents a gallon one day, and it was a dollar twelve the next day. And uh, the pumps that we had at the gas station did not have more than two digits on it because gas had never been over a dollar gallon. So we had to take a sticky note and put a one on it and put it on the pump and tape it to the pump so that we could have three digits. Yeah, it was it was very very odd. And I wonder if that's what happened with the slot. The slot? Well, I'm just thinking. This is a three toes. All the three slot. toes. How did that evolve? Well, originally it was simpler. probably. I think there are two toed slots, but they probably had to put a sticky note in just on the place where right? the third claw was. That's probably See, that's and that is evolution, my friends. So you, hello, Texas evolution. So you think that's all I'm saying so that you think that that's uh, you think we're just the the whole uh, additional prices on the gas is just an evolutionary process. I think absolutely. And Actually, I think the oil spill is an evolutionary process. I, I don't remember what the date was, but Earth hmm. Day is April what? It was Earth Day. It it sank on Earth Day. I believe. It sank on Earth Day, and yeah. Earth Day was started in Santa Barbara, California, because of a massive oil spill. Oh, that's correct. So it has kind of come full circle so it's come that full way. Circle. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and, and I, so I was telling this story about I was working at this gas pump, and at that time, it was really the first time that people in America had any kind of clue, like, oh, we might have to fucking change our ideas about how we use oil. I think the, the thing that's kind of surprising to me is that it's taken us this long, and hopefully this is a turning point. I do think it probably is, when I think particularly of that synchronicity, that Earth Day starts with an oil spill, and hopefully the need for Earth Day is going to end with an oil spill, so that yeah. we don't have to do that, so that, you know, we're paying attention to this all the time. So yes, there is still oil pouring into the sea. You know, a lot of people, I'll just tell you, I have a kind of a funny attitude about this stuff. A lot of people kind of adopt this idea of like save the earth. And I don't believe in that. Um, because I don't honestly think that the actual earth needs saving. She's fine. She's always been fine. She has seen more shit than you could even imagine. But the truth is, is that if we screw up our environment, we're not going to be so fine. And you know what? Earth isn't really going to care. Like, yeah, well, Listen. what the fuck? Another species. Here it goes. And here it goes. In the end, this planet will have her way. We oh, will either yeah. get it together yeah. or, you know. There was a really funny circle one time where a woman came and she was really worried about the concept of, she had just read this thing about like peak oil, like we're running out of oil. We're definitely going to run out of oil. And. And she asked Karuk about that, and uh, and uh, he said, well, yeah. He said, but, you know, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, everything that you now run on gasoline was mostly run on coal. And he said, and you, you shifted, you evolved, you did something else. And he said, none of you look back and go, ooh, the good old days of coal. I wish we could go back to the good old days of coal. You know, when that sloth is racing up the tree because he's got three toes, he does not think He's for not a looking back. That's right. That's right. Don't I look couldn't back. have done this with the two toes. Yeah. <laughs> and what if I get four? Because three doesn't work anymore. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. 